Welcome to Northwest Profiles, a look at people, places, and events of interest in the inland Northwest. treated everybody the same. I don't think he had any in the world that I know of. He was just a little bit different. In a way, he was a very outgoing person. In a way, he was a very private person. He had real highs where he was really in good moods, and then he had real dark, gloomy moods, too. So, And it, it, his paintings reflected it. He was a kind of a weird little guy. Lino Prestini, artist, adventurer, and nonconformist, lived most of his life in Clayton, Washington, north of Spokane. Lino was born in 1906 in Italy. When he was a young child, his family brought him to the Spokane area. Years later, the Prestini family moved to Clayton. Lino and his brother Baptiste worked for the town's terracotta plant, creating ornamentation for buildings in the region. Lino's work can still be seen on the old moose lodge at Clayton and at Martin Hall at Eastern Washington University. The Ace of Spades insignia on the Feltzfield Air National Guard hangar is Lino's work, as well as terracotta work in Spokane locations including the Rookery Building, Paulson Medical Center, and the Davenport Hotel, which has ram's heads made by Lino. There is one extra ram's head that wouldn't fit on the Davenport. That head found a home on the old schoolhouse at Clayton where it still maintains a noble, silent vigil. In addition to Lino's professional artistic work, he dabbled in cartooning, painting, and sculpting on his own. Those who knew Lino say that he had an offbeat nature, which showed itself in his artwork and his daily life. Uh, there was a tasty freeze like across the street in front of the old garage that's caved in now, and he'd go over to get a milkshake, and he'd come over and sit in front of the old pot belly uh, get, uh, oil stove, wrap up in, in a blanket and shiver and drink that milkshake. I, w I always thought that was funny to watch him do that, but he loved those milkshakes. He had the neatest pickup truck in the whole world. He had skulls all over the place on it with lights in the skull sockets. So whenever he turned his lights on, all the lights and the skulls lit up. And it looked like a devil mobile going down the road. And you could tell it was Lino's rig from a mile away because it was noisy and it's the only thing that had skulls on it. He always told me my husband wasn't going to be worth anything unless I let him go ride the railroad for a couple years because you had to be a hobo before you were worth anything. But we got married quite young, so he always used to tell me that. Mert's husband never did ride the rails. Even so, he did all right for himself, and they've been married for 40 years. Lino continued to make a name for himself as the town character. At one point, he decided he wanted to scuba dive. Along with his friend Burton Stewart, Lino made a diving helmet out of an old water heater and used it to explore Loon Lake. They looked like spacemen. Uh, Burton Stewart, he was the mail carrier around there. He would man the uh, air and uh, Lino would dive and then vice versa. Burton would dive and Lino would man the air. Uh, us kids used it when we were growing up, but Lino was still alive and it had a hand pump you'd pump both ways. Well, it was only working one way and one of us about drowned because there wasn't enough pressure in the, the tank to keep the water out. Lino is remembered for his artwork as well as his antics. Like his paintings, Lino was a study in contrasts, upbeat yet troubled. Burdened by depression and failed romantic relationships, Lino spent much of his life wrestling with his demons.
I remember taking my mother in one time to view his artwork and she being raised in the Bible Belt of the South thought it was all from the devil, you know. <laughs> so, but you know, it, it's, you're entitled to your opinion. Personally, he was always my favorite artist. I mean, it's always got a dark edge to it. He just seemed slightly troubled all through his life, like trapped or confined. But he was also, in a way, psychic. Because, well, man, evolution. Man versus machine. Caveman fighting the robot. Robots didn't even look like that in 1937. Or even Hitler. Well, all of Hitler's paintings. <laughs> Those were kind of morbid in a way, but true. One of them is a wedding present from Lino that he painted for my husband and I. Um, he always told a story. It's two people on a chessboard, like life is a game and there's a fork in the road and you either go to the darkness in the valley or you go to the castle in the sky. Lino's artwork attracted interest from friends, family, and some critics. He was frustrated though when his work did not receive the recognition he sought. At one point, Life magazine considered running a double-page spread of Lino's paintings, but then decided not to feature his work. These setbacks contributed to Lino's depression. Ultimately, Lino could not stay away from his own darkness, and in 1963, he died from a self-inflicted bullet wound. Lino always said he'd never be famous until he was dead, so he wasn't it was something that shocked us, but not really shocked us because he had said that the last couple of years before he did commit suicide. When they sold everything, when they auctioned off everything, everything went to the four corners. And what didn't get sold went to the dump. Which, uh, if I would have known that, I would have been right behind him. Give me. <laughs> Actually, a lot of our artifacts that were Lino's we got out back out of the Clayton dump. Lino Prestini's artwork is kept in private collections and in a small number of museums around the Inland Northwest. His art and lifestyle reflected his complex inner workings. Lino was intense and intelligent, frustrated yet hopeful, passionate yet playful. He, he was a fun person to beat around. And, and, and you know, as kids, we used to go down there and watch him paint in the evenings or something. And I probably learned quite a bit of life from Lino. I mean, maybe more than I should have at a younger age. <laughs> If you have a story idea for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSPS-TV, 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington, 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSPS Public Television.